My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our first reading this month, we see a man who was caught up by God himself. He is no other than Moses. From the very beginning, God was protecting the life of Moses and God was preparing him to be his servant and leader of his people. And this is what precisely God does with each and every one of us. From the very beginning of our own lives, God continues to protect each and every one of us preparing us to become his servants and indeed to be leaders wherever we may be found. In the burning bush, the Lord appears to Moses and speaks to him. And he reveals himself as Yahweh, which means I am who I am. God is the one who is always present because God is present. And God gives Moses another chance, another opportunity to know the aim as well as the goal and purpose of his life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when we see this encounter of Moses with God in the burning bush, God tells him, remove your sandals, for where you are is the holy ground. God is calling upon each and every one of us to remove our own sandals, for where we are is the holy ground. God is asking us to remove all that would impede his communication with each and every one of us. It may not necessarily be sandals that we are putting on. It can equally be the wig that we are putting on, the lipstick, the eyebrow pencil, the cutex, the concealer. <laughs> it can also be the foundation and the splash. Remove them because they are impeding God's communication with each and every of us. God is asking each and every of us, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to remove anything that would make it difficult for God to penetrate in our lives. For God to make meaning in our lives. It could be our own profession. It could be our own relationships. It could be all those things that don't count which continue to make us find it difficult to enter into a personal relationship with God until we remove that from our lives. It will be difficult for us to realize the aim of our own lives, the goal of our own lives, and indeed the purpose of our own lives. And that is why God is calling upon each and every one of us to remove those sandals because they are impeding that communication with him. And in our second reading, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we hear about the people of Israel, their journey in the desert, and how they enjoy the protection of the Lord when they were hungry. He gave them food from heaven. He gave them water 
from the rock. And day and night, he protected them. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when we reflect upon our own lives, how God has journeyed with each and every of us from the time that we were born up to now, we can see how God has protected each and every of us from all harm. And when we were in want, God provided. When we were in need, God came to our rescue. And this is how God has always been to each and every of us. Unfortunately, like the people of Israel, despite the experience of love and protection of the Lord, they were very disobedient and continued to murmur. And they paid that with their own lives. Some perished in the desert because of their own disobedience. Equally, we too, because of our own disobedience, not listening to the word, we go astray and we miss the opportunities that God always gives each and every one of us. Think in our own families, how our parents, they would spare every single way to bring us up, we as young people. They will try to provide for each and every one of us. But unfortunately, we don't even obey them. Especially when we get, is it to grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, Westy when we become grade 7s. Because we are able now to speak this and that. When our parents say, can you please go and fetch some more? Me, me, I can't. But we are forgetting that we need that water so that our parents can prepare us food. When they say, can you kindly clean up the house? No, me, I'm busy. But immediately you just hear a telephone and you disappear. Where were you? Mm -hmm. Where were you? Mm -hmm. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, disobedience does not bring us anywhere. And that is why God continuously calls upon each and every one of us to revert back to himself. In our gospel reading, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we hear some people came to Jesus and told him about the people who were killed by Pilate. When they were offering sacrifice in the temple and also about those who died in Silao Tower collapsed. These people, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, were thinking that those who were killed by Pilatus and in the collapse of the tower were sinful people. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it was due to the fact that the people had in mind that because of their sinfulness, they were killed in such a brutal way. Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, rejects that kind of a popular thinking that all misfortune are divine punishment. And he gives us to understand that we are not to imagine a stern and punitive God who makes out sickness, accidents, misfortunes as a response to people's sins. However, Jesus invites each and every one of us 
to examine our own lives. That we ought to listen to God's call to conversion and to a change of lifestyle. Because it's when we don't convert that we lead ourselves to do. Until, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are able to convert, we lead ourselves to do. Jesus suggests that rather than asking how God could let these things happen, we should wonder what positive lessons we can learn from these tragedies. I remember of a certain story of a family, a young woman married so well. She was almost like the breadwinner of the entire family. All relatives used to come. And one day, she lies in bed, sick from cancer. And then, her relatives come. When they see her in bed, they couldn't believe that all of a sudden, the lady had changed. Then they started asking, why? Of all the people, only you. And the young lady, so jovial, turns to the aunt. Aunt, but why are you saying that? Then the aunt starts, started now telling the story. Look, you are the only one that supports us. We have all these things because of you. Now, if you die, we are doomed. Then the niece says, uh, Auntie, do you have somebody in mind who should be sick than myself? All that the young lady did was to accept the problem and the challenge that had befallen her. And what lessons could we all learn from such kind of an experience? And this is precisely what our Lord is challenging each and every one of us. When we meet with tragedy, the question should be, what can I learn from this in order to avoid the same mistake in the future? Namely, it's about conversion. Our Lord calls us to conversion. But what you I should now ask myself, not how did I, but what should I learn from this? Namely, to avoid ukubumuka. Nangunachia muku muku doba, muku sesha apo, muku iba, olu vanjika tabanguma. We shouldn't say, who, who, who beat me? The question should be, why was I, what, what happened for me to be beaten? Because I stole, I should stop. We have to convert. And this is what our Lord is challenging each and every one of us. To begin life anew. And especially in this Lenten season. Let us take it up. As our own challenge, my dear and sisters in Christ, to reflect deeply, to be converted, to begin life anew. How can we create opportunities? How can we turn these challenges into our opportunities? This is what the Lord is saying to each and every one of us. 
It won't be easy by us just protesting at God or denying his own existence, but by doing a bit to lessen what we are going through ourselves. It's not about protesting that you, you are the only breadwinner, you are the only person that gives us everything now, you are the person that is sick. It won't help you. It's about what is it that I'm able to learn from this situation. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, every moment is an opportunity that God gives us to tend to him. Every moment is an opportunity that God gives us to tend to him and to make efforts to bring forth fruits. Because we shall not be judged by any measure, but rather by the opportunities that we have received. How did we make use of those opportunities? Be it sickness. Be it when we have experienced a tragedy in our own family. Even when we have experienced something worse in our own life situation. What have we learned? And how can we turn around that kind of a challenge into an opportunity? There lies the answer for each and every one of us.